Welcome back to another reading and correcting with me, Kindar, the Tiger Knights, and Ty, the Tiger Supervisor. These are where I do a, re a reading of one of my chapters and correct it as I go. If you want to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. And if you're looking to support me, that is on my Patreon. Today we are doing chapter 32 of A Series of Death. Marlowe stared at the screen, trying to understand why Stalker 2.0 had crashed. It simply added parameters to the prey species that would allow them to stalk predators, or anyone really. Stalker 2.0 didn't seem to like that. Somewhere in his coded guts, Marlowe had coded prey in a way that in a way 2.0 couldn't attribute them predator behavior. A knock at the door pulled him away. He noticed the envelope Elahan held before she mentioned it, and he nodded. This was faster than he'd expected. It had only been a few days since Algarinam had tied Tremor up. Maybe not killing and in, an intended prey hadn't satisfied his need. The research wasn't strong on how the hunter's need to kill was governed. Maybe he counted on Marlowe killing him there, and now they were both paying for it. Although, if that was the case, why hadn't the hare stayed and forced Marlot and Trembor to kill him? If he'd been in a better place, they'd have talked. He'd have asked. Thanks, he told her as he took it. He smirked when he didn't see the Revenue Bureau logo on the corner. Algarinam had stopped pretending it came from them. He turned the envelope over, felt the shape of the card in it. He considered destroying it. He told himself he was done playing the hare's game. There was no point in doing that anymore. Turbo had made it clear there was nothing Marlot could do to make him see reason. What he should do was hand everything over to the Revenue Bureau. Tell them the hunter existed and wash his fur of it all. Only then he'd have to explain why he'd waited this long. He could excuse a few things about it, but once that R.I. had come questioning him about talk t talking to one of the victims, Molo would have a tough time convincing anyone he didn't know what was happening. He sighed and opened it. Even if he destroyed it, even if he decided to never play the hare's sick game, Algarinam wouldn't stop. Even if he stopped sending the cards to Marlo, the bodies would keep appearing. Someone would make the connection, and they'd come asking why he hadn't done, he hadn't told anyone. Marlo had stuck himself in a position where he couldn't stop. The only way he was getting out of this was out of this with his fur intact was to finish it himself. He caught the card as it fell out, and his heart stuttered as he saw the lion picture of the card. Not again. As a thought. As he thought Tremper was going to be the next victim again, he noticed the mane was almost black with hints of red, and his fur was more brown than golden. He relaxed and looked at the name, Gorek Shining Pelt. He was a good decade older than Tremper. He dismissed, he dismissed Stalker 2.0 and entered the name of, in the original version. Within seconds, the, pro the approximate value of the lion appeared, and Mallot realized he had a problem. His value. The lion was upper management at a successful advertising firm. Some research told Marlowe that Gorek's division specialized in reframing public image. The list of clients they worked on was long, no names he recognized, and a search showed many were in the entertainment industry. Marlowe didn't care for movies except Tiff's, Tiff's Alnard's Tigress. He'd watched, the show for, he'd watched the show her first movie had been turned into, so he'd have something to talk about. about with the bartender, and he'd found the utter unrealistic science, the forced situation, the unbelievable interpersonal relationship, and the lioness's co-star more entertaining than he'd believed possible. He'd been disappointed to reach the end of the show in only a dozen episodes. It seemed few people enjoyed it as much as he did. Her name wasn't on the list, so he picked one at random. Sharon Pellstripe, a retired hunt player who was now popular in advertising. Marlot watched the tiger in a fur wash ad, and he had to admit the male was attractive, if nothing else. His career had been good, according to the article he looked at, until an injury during a game forced him to retire early, more than a decade ago. He'd remained in the public's eyes, but not in for anything good. Reports of violence against his mate adopting a cub, then losing custody, a breaking 
of their mating contract so public that on reading about it, Mallet remembers some of it from the news back when he still lived in Little Valley. Then nothing for almost a year. Curious, Mallet dug deeper. The lawsuits were discreetly settled. The male did some time at a drug rehab clinic, rehabilitation clinic, then volunteered at that same clinic and, and homeless shelter. He used some of his wealth to start a regreening project in the city, and on the heel of that was the first advertising contract, playing off his new wholesome image. If Marlow didn't know about the involvement of Corex firm, he would have been impressed with the length the male had gone through to make amends. Now he had to question how much of it had been, bo had been the male's decision and how much had been forced on him by the firm. All that accumulated into Gorex value. That was the first thing the stalker program gave him, because it was the thing Marlowe cared about the most. He needed to be sure he could afford the body. Algarinam didn't care about their value, since he wasn't planning on paying for them. It was why he needed Stalker 2.0, which unfortunately wouldn't accept that Prey could do the stalking. He could have it run as if it was a hare. He could have it run as if the hare was a predator. He had enough from his victim, Marlowe thought it could build a profile, but he was already noticing errors in the test he ran. No two predators talked the same way, and while there were more similarities than difference between within species, how different would a hare doing the stalking be from an, from other species? He was going to have to rewrite 2.0's codes for in its entirety. Marlowe smiled. It would be fun. He looked at the card, only he couldn't get lost in that. He needed to decide what to do about Gorek, about Algarinam. Marlot couldn't get the program to work right now. He had to accept that. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be done in a day in a few days either. So he needed to push it back until the hair was dealt with. That meant he had to do this the old fashioned way. If Tremble was still here, he'd hand over that part to him. Instead, he called Grebor again and got the badger to give him the name of the people he remembered fighting the hare, then spent a few hours calling them. They all remembered him. Losing to a prey was memorable, but the hare hadn't talked with any of them, just like when he'd fought Marlot. They'd fought in silence. Once it was over, Marlot had sat to nurse his pride while waiting for Trembor to arrive, and the hare had moved on to fighting someone else. Not getting anything useful from the calls, he left to go to to go to Gorek's house. He'd hand in the ID and question the lion. Maybe he'd remember the hare. If not, Marlot would set up a location he could watch the lion from a distance and hope he could ambush the hare. And that concludes chapter 32 of A Series of Death. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next chapter is going to be, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the book as well as the others in the series, they are available at all major e-retailer. If you're looking for a different way to support me, that would be my Patreon. Well, you can also get access to just about everything I've written. And if you are looking to listen to these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. The links are in the notes. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.